Sorry, the nurse you all. <clears throat> Happy holidays, everyone. I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince. And welcome to part four of my 2017 Christmas Marathon on Mustang Prince Oro Reports. Now, as most of you know, A Christmas Carol is a real holiday classic. And it's a story that my friends at Musical Theater Village love to perform every Christmas. Speaking of which... This year it happens to be my 12th Christmas performing with them. And, of course, it's been two years since I looked at my friend's favorite Christmas Carol adaptation, which starred the Muppets. But, have you ever wondered what it was like while Charles Dickens was writing the story? Well, just recently, I saw a very interesting movie that totally blew me away. And at the same time, my theater friends had asked me to do a blog on it. So let's get started. Released on November 22nd, 2017, the movie is The Man Who Invented Christmas. Now let's get started. In 1843, the celebrated British novelist Charles Dickens is at a low point in his career with three flops behind him and his family expenses piling up at home. Determined to recover, Dickens decides to write a Christmas story and self-publish it in less than two months. As Dickens labors writing on such short notice, his estranged father and mother come to bunk with him. Still haunted by painful memories of his father ruining his childhood by his financial irresponsibility, Dickens develops a writer's block which seems to have no solution. As such, Dickens must face his personal demons epitomized through his characters, especially in his imagined conversations with Ebenezer Scrooge. Now with a looming deadline, Dickens struggles for inspiration against his frustrations and his characters' opinions with a literary challenge, creating a classic tale that would define the essential soul of modern Christmas. So, what are my thoughts? Well, I gotta say, this was a great movie, and it was very interesting seeing Mr. Dickens make his classic Christmas story come to life as he was writing it. But, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's move on to Mustang Notes. The movie was directed by Bayorat now, Laurie, and written by Susan Coyne. <sighs> I hope I'm pronouncing them right. And it's based on the book of the same name by Les Standiford. The studio who made this movie possible was Bleecker Street, whom I'm not too familiar with. Anyway, one of the interesting parts about this movie, other than the setting in London, is that they mentioned the three flop stories that followed Oliver Twist, which were Nicholas Nickleby, The Old Curiosity Shop, and Barnaby Rudge. And I like the scene that foreshadowed one of Dickens' future books, David Copperfield. Also, there are several scenes in the movie that do quotes and references that would later be heard in the story. Another scene that was pretty interesting was when Charles thinks up Scrooge's deceased partner, Jacob Marley, which happens not too long after Charles' knocker breaks off his front door. In my opinion, Donald Sumter's acting as Marley was very intimidating, but his portrayal as Marley is kind of mixed. Let me explain. You see, while he does look scary, he doesn't have that many chains on him compared to other versions and my portrayal as him. Now here's where we come to the three ghosts of Christmas. Now, before I start, I need to alert you guys that I won't be showing any photos of them due to the fact that I couldn't find any of them on Google. Firstly, the ghost of Christmas past in this movie is portrayed as a young girl with wavy brown hair and wearing a, a white dress. And to me, 
it's pretty much matches the book's description. Also to note, the way my theater friends portray past is pretty similar, except um, they wear either a blue or red winter dress. Next we have the Ghost of Christmas Present, who looks like a jolly giant wielding a torch. And like the version with Jim Carrey, this version makes the room itself become Bob Cratchit's house. Speaking of which, the Ghost of Christmas Present is one of the characters I play this season. Finally, we have the Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come, whom, like most versions, is a hooded figure who never speaks and shows Scrooge visions of his future. However, in my opinion, the way the ghost moves his arms is almost like he's a statue come to life. Heck, I even noticed a bit of rubble falling off of him. And who, boy, do I remember the time seven Christmases ago when I played the Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come at Musical Theater Village. And while it was nice to do something new at the time, there was one person who didn't really like me as the character, my mother, because she couldn't see my face under the hood. Also, not only do they mention Bob Cratchit in this, but they also mention his son Tiny Tim, Fezziwig, Want and Ignorance, and I think they mention Mrs. Dilber. I don't know. Sadly, this movie does not show Scrooge's nephew Fred, his sister Fan, or his ex fiance Belle. But then again, some films based on true stories do leave some facts out. Eh, whatever. Anyway, let's move on to the cast. The author of Christmas Carol, Charles Dickens, is played by Dan Stevens who recently this year played the Beast from Disney's live-action remake of Beauty and the Beast. In my opinion, Dan Stevens was really good as Charles. I mean, sure, Mr. Dickens was a gentleman and a genius, but while writing his new story, he was showing signs of frustration and rage. And, like P.L. Travers from Saving Mr. Banks, this movie showed a few flashbacks from Charles' past, and to me, these flashbacks were very harsh. Next we have the main character of Christmas Carol, Ebenezer Scrooge, played by Christopher Plummer, best known from The Sound of Music, An American Tale, Rock-A-Doodle, Up, Nine, Babes in Toyland, and just recently, he voiced King Herod in The Star. Wow, Plummer in two Christmas movies this year? Man. Anyway, in my opinion, Plummer's portrayal as Scrooge was very spot on. However, this version of Scrooge is similar, but different from the way he is in the book. In several scenes throughout the movie, Scrooge appears as a figment of Charles' imagination. Next we have Charles' father, John Dickens, played by Jonathan Price, best known as Governor Swan from the Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy, and Mr. Dark from Something Wicked This Way Comes. Charles views his father to be as immature and fiscally irresponsible. In my opinion, the scene where John gets sent to a debtor's prison while, while Charles was a boy really broke my heart. Finally, we have Charles' friend John Forster, played by Justin Edwards, best known from the Paddington films. Anyway, there's not much to say about Forster other than the fact that he tries to help Charles with some tips for his story while they go around London, 
even with Charles suffering from rage and frustration. The rest of the cast includes Simon Callow, Miriam Margolis, and Anna Murphy. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, The Man Who Invented Christmas is a great movie to see during the holiday season. The story is well written and directed, the acting is spot on, the setting in London 1843 is great, and I really like the Christmas Carol references that are seen and heard in many parts of the movie. Plus, in my opinion, Charles Dickens is the best character in the whole movie, because without him, we wouldn't have the classic story, and Christmas would never be as beloved as it is today. So if you folks out there haven't seen this movie yet, go see it now. And trust me, you'll be in for a real holiday treat. I give this movie 90% out of 100. Yeah, that should do it. Well, that's it for today, everyone. But before I go, I would like to invite you to see A Christmas with Scrooge at Musical Theater Village. If you'd like to purchase tickets, then I highly suggest you go to the link listed here. But you have until December 30th to see it. So anyway, be sure to join me for my next blog. Until then, I think I'll just sit back and read A Christmas Carol. Mustang Power.